Hi guys, welcome to vlog 21 um, and welcome to Penang Island here in Malaysia. Uh, in fact, this is going to be one of two vlogs I'm going to be making this week. Uh, the first one is going to be this one, a questions and answers vlog. And the second vlog will be a more kind of standard running around travel type vlog. Um, the reason for doing this is because last week I didn't release any vlogs. Um, I was kind of too busy traveling, um, literally traveling. I was in three countries in the space of one week. So the last vlog you guys may have seen was myself in Saigon in Vietnam. Um, and then from Vietnam I flew into Bangkok in Thailand where I was only really staying just for two or three days just as a stopover on my way to flying here to Malaysia. Um, and because I only had two or three days in Bangkok I didn't really want to spend it working and editing and that kind of stuff so I literally just ran around, saw it, caught up with some friends and then flew over here to Malaysia. So I've been here for around three or four days already. It's beautiful, I love it. Um, but I want to talk to you more about that and show you a lot more of Penang in the second vlog which is going to be released this week. So, this week, questions and answers. Firstly, thank you to everybody that has sent me some questions. I really appreciate it. Okay guys, so first question. Mary Ann from Washington DC in the United States asks, what is the best view you've ever laid eyes on? I guess if we could say like maybe my favorite place in the world or what I think is the most beautiful place in the world, um, there's a, a million places which are equally as gorgeous as each other. Um, but for me, my number one place in the world uh, where I feel grounded is my hometown of Dartmouth um, in Devon in the United Kingdom. It's a river town. I grew up living on a boat, um, living on this river. And Dartmouth is just absolutely beautiful. Um, it looks kind of like an Italian river village or something in the summer. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So that's kind of one of the greatest views I've ever had. Um, in terms of traveling a bit further afield, Norway is it's outrageous how beautiful Norway is. And I have to be honest, I'm quite thankful that people think of Iceland a lot more than Norway because it keeps Norway a bit more special. Um, Norway for me is hands down probably the most beautiful country in the world. It's ridiculous. When you go around a corner, there's like waterfall after waterfall after waterfall. Um, and then you're climbing up these mountains and there's clouds on the field next to you. The clouds are the same level as your bus or your car because you're that high up in the mountains. And then you look down over these gorgeous fjords, which are like thousands of meters below. It's just stunning. One of the other views that really stands out, Marianne, is um, the view from the Great Wall of China. I remember getting there. I only had time to go to one of the more busy parts of the wall. I mean, it was so busy, it's kind of like this, like Ugh! But at the same time, I remember having this moment where I turned away from the crowds and I kind of like just leant on the wall so that all I could actually see was the view and I couldn't see the million people around me. And just for a second, I had this beautiful view across these Chinese mountains watching the wall kind of snake over up and down on the contours of the mountains. Um, like kind of snake if you like going across the mountains and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, second question uh, comes from Dan in Stockholm, Sweden. Hi Dan. Um, he asks, what's the most unexpected thing you've experienced while traveling so far? Um, Dan, I'm gonna answer this in a couple of, couple of answers. One of the most unexpected things is sweat. Sweat, sweat, sweat. Uh, from the moment I arrived in New York City last July and I started walking around Central Park with my backpack on and my camera and everything else, um, I was just drenched in sweat. I was wet from head to toe in sweat. My t-shirt was wet, my back was wet. And it, basically from that day on, pretty much until now, that's just how it is. So hot. <laughs> I wish I could have, like show you on a vlog how hot it is. So I'm just like sweating. You know when your back sweats? Like my chest is sweating. And it's been like that for the last five months. Everywhere I've been has been so hot and humid. Humid is the word because it's not always like, oh, you know, how can you complain it's hot because it's blue skies and sunshine and you can get a nice suntan. But the problem is, more often than not, it is always nearly humid. Um, and all you're doing is walking around with quite a white sky or cloudy sky, but just sweating. What's the most unexpected thing? I would say how different or how much a country can change just across a border and how the feel of a country really quickly changes like that. 
um, because you kind of think they kind of merge into one or to the other. Like Thailand is a bit like Cambodia, is a bit like Vietnam, but they're not. They're really entirely different, and I don't just mean in how they look, but in how the people are, and in their mannerisms, in their their warmth and their friendliness. Everything really changes, you know. So in Cambodia, I find people are very full of heart and very, very smiley and very friendly and, and very sweet. Um, in Vietnam, they're a lot more, I would say, maybe guarded. Um, they're still friendly and they're still very kind, or perhaps even a little mysterious, you know? Um, they're not quite as obvious or as open as the Cambodians. And that's just like a six hour bus ride from Phnom Penh into Saigon. So it's really like a quick difference. Um, and again, from Vietnam going into Thailand, totally different. Absolutely, totally. It's a one hour and 20 minute flight and everything just changes, you know, totally. So I guess in terms of unexpected things I've experienced on this journey, sweating a lot and how much a country can change just across a border. So next question uh, comes from Kim in the United Kingdom, my home country. Hi Kim. Um, she asks, have I seen any of the seven wonders of the world? So I did a quick search on the internet, Kim, on the seven wonders of the world, and the reason being that I understand sometimes they change or they get voted or, or something like that. So at the moment, in 2017, the seven wonders of the world are <coughs> dum -dum -dum, Chichen Itza, Mexico, seen it. Uh, Christ the Redeemer in Brazil, in Rio, seen it. Uh, the Great Wall of China, as I mentioned earlier, seen it. Um, Machu Picchu, Peru, I haven't seen it. Um, Petra in Jordan, I still haven't seen it, but I'd quite like to. Uh, the Rome Colosseum, um, I've seen it about three times. <laughs> Rome's a great city. Um, and the Taj Mahal in India, I haven't seen it, um, but I'd absolutely love to, and I love India. Kim also asks, do I have any plans once I finish my Four Sides of a Coin book and film project? Actually, I mean, this is what I'm doing for this year is, I'm not just making vlogs or running around traveling, I'm actually writing a book and um, making a film documentary called Four Sides of a Coin. And it's called Four Sides because primarily I'm going to be living in four different parts of the world. So I've lived in America for three months, Cambodia for two months, and two um, secret destinations still to come. Um, and the book and film is going to be about different people's human values um, from those kind of different samples of the world. I want to go back to England at some point next year and I will be editing my um, film and my book and make sure that's as good as it can possibly be before I release that. Maybe I go back working uh, for some time as I did before, or maybe I start something brand new, or maybe I somehow go traveling a little bit more. So I'm really not too sure at the moment, but the initial plan is when I get back will really just to be to edit this film and um, edit the book properly. Okay, so Mimi from the Netherlands, she asks, what is the best vegan food I've had while traveling and what country has been the best for vegan food? So the best vegan specific food I've had while traveling, which is an Indian food, um, was the live sandwich in the Vibe Cafe Bar in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Uh, the sandwich was like a toasted sandwich with fried tempeh, avocado, green pesto and salad. It was absolutely amazing and served with these really crispy and soft kind of crumbly sweet potato fries, which was fantastic. The best country for vegan food, probably I'd say is uh, America in terms of options, um, because you can buy anything there. I mean, the fresh food is amazing, um, and they also have all this kind of like vegan ice cream, vegan pizza and all this stuff, but one thing I really need to mention is that it's fantastic that countries are really pushing forward to create vegan versions of, you know, what would be considered normal food before. Um, but there's a real danger that a lot of these vegan friendly foods that are being made are just processed junk food. So it's great you can have vegan ice cream or great you can have vegan cookies or vegan pizza or whatever, but you know, it's not healthy food. And I think what I love also about a million other things about being vegan is that you eat healthily and your body, you know, reaps the rewards from that. So it's great to have a little treat now and again, but there's a real danger that in the future if um, people accelerate in terms of processing vegan food into just junk food and vegan microwave meals and vegan crap, then you know being healthy won't be a side effect of, of being vegan. So there is a danger of that. Okay, next question comes from Dominico in Los Angeles and he writes, Dear Robbie, do you think you will ever settle down? If you were to mean settle down like not traveling anymore, um, not being creative and having those passions and kind of just doing the nine to five job, 
cutting the grass in the garden on the weekend and, and that kind of being my life with a wife and kids? Probably not. I've got no issue with having a wife or kids at some point, um, but when I have free time away from any work or job I'm doing, I need to be doing exciting things, I need to be uh, fulfilling passions and creativity. I'm a very creative person, um, I'm a very passionate person, and I need my soul to be on fire. I need to be creative and I need to have a fire in my belly and you know, whether that's through exploring or traveling or photography or swimming or running or whatever it might be, or cycling, whatever, you know. Um, I need to do more than just the, the normal kind of house stuff of just sitting indoors watching TV or gardening. It just, it would kill me. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if um, I settle down or don't settle down or if I have these passions with someone or not with someone. I guess the most important thing is always is just to be happy and as long as I'm always happy then it doesn't really matter which situation I'm in or who with, you know. So um, maybe someday in some form. Perhaps. Clements in Germany, he asks, what was the most impressive place or moment of this journey so far? There's been a few, I mean there's been many, so some highlights would be hiking and climbing up Mount Rainier, the volcanic mountain in Washington state, uh, taking the train across America from east coast to west, and I remember one night sitting in a dining car off the train, eating my dinner and watching the Mississippi River pass by and thinking this is kind of amazing. Um, also that train ride for three days was like a big endurance test, so the other guys uh, and the train become friends you know, by the morning, um, and then you kind of have a big gang of you traveling across America together and watching sunsets over the Arizona desert and all that kind of stuff, so that was pretty special. Um, what else? Uh, in Saigon just a few weeks ago, um, I took a big walk out to the edge of the city uh, over this big bridge which overlooks this kind of skyline of Saigon and watching the sunset over the skyline of Saigon. That was pretty special and quite a big moment. But I guess the most um, impressive moment or place or anything of this journey is just the people. It's the kindness of the people. The people that become my friends, the strangers that are friends by morning, um, the smiles that a stranger can give me, seeing friends old and new, um, you know, friends I haven't seen for a while and friends I've just met that are now kind of friends for life. So there's been some great moments and some amazing and beautiful places. My friend in Turkey, um, she asks, was there ever a moment when you ever thought, what the hell am I doing here? If yes, when, where, and how? <sighs> so yeah, um, a few times, uh, and most weeks. <laughs> um, when I first started this trip, I was staying on my friend Haley's uh, floor in her room on a mattress, and I woke up one morning, and I kind of looked around, and I'm like, where the hell am I? What am I doing? What is this? And then in my head, it was like I kind of mapped in in my mind, I went like, you're in Brooklyn, you're in New York, you're traveling the world, you're making this film and book. Okay, I got it. Um, in Saigon, just a few weeks ago, in fact, there I was kind of waking up in bed one morning and thinking like, what country is this? What am I? Is it Vietnam? Cambodia? Thailand? Where, where am I? And I totally forgot, then I was like, okay, you're in Vietnam. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I remember. Has there been some moments where I just thought, what the hell am I doing? Is in like, why did I quit my job? Why am I traveling? Is this film gonna be any good? Is my book gonna be any good? There's many moments like that. If you ever watch my film trailer, which is in my YouTube videos, guys, if you wanna go and watch it, click on my videos on my YouTube channel, and I think it's one of the first videos I uploaded. There's a very kind of brief introductory trailer about my film and book. And I said in that trailer, this new adventure should scare and thrill me. I should question it. It should question me. And there's been some moments like that where so you sometimes have like what I call travel magic, which is like really good days where everything goes right, your traveling goes right, you have a good day, the emails you're waiting for come through, it all goes to plan. Then you have other days where everything goes wrong, and I mean everything, and it's one after the other after the other, and at some point you kind of go like, oh my god, what am I doing here? Is this really like what I set out to do and is this telling me that I shouldn't be doing this? There are many moments like that. Just last week in, in Bangkok in Thailand, I lost my bank card. The next day after that my accommodation here in Malaysia was cancelled and I had three hours to find somewhere else to live before I flew into Malaysia. Um, you know, I deleted all my, my financial budget for the next six months of travelling, I deleted that email, all in the same day this happened. And there's moments like that where you just think like, what am I doing? What am I doing? But then I just think back to what I said, that this journey will question me and I will question this journey. Um, but I need to ride those waves and get to the calmer seas because that's all part of this experience. And if I 
kind of leave now, if I just run away, then I'm gonna miss so many lessons and so many great experiences. Okay guys, last question. Mikey in the US asks, if I could repeat any one trip I've ever done in my life, which trip would it be and why? Good question. Um, I'm actually not much of a believer in really looking back in my life. Um, I do like to kind of keep things fresh and new and keep moving forwards. That's that saying where they say, if you're looking in the rear view mirror, you can't always see what's coming ahead of you. And I kind of believe in that. But at the same time, there is one trip, Mikey, that comes to mind. So last year in 2016, my friends Rob, Brett, Stuart and myself, we devised a cycling route across the heart of the Netherlands. We cycled 250 miles in three and a half days. We were averaging between 60 to 70 miles every single day, um, cycling through rain, wind, whatever came our way. But morale was high, we had some great laughs and jokes and it was a real adventure and great with some really good friends. Most importantly for myself is that I actually used that cycling trip as a fundraising um, exercise and I raised some funding for myself to take uh, to West Africa a few thousand bucks that I've raised and with the money I'd raised I actually took a kid from a sweatshop in a market and put him into full-time education until he graduates and we managed to buy a, a school about two to three hundred desks and we sourced all the materials locally I didn't give any money away to anyone I made sure I bought everything and I visited and I inspected what people needed so every cent went in the right place and I would love to do that again I'd like to film that trip and make a, a little documentary for YouTube to put out for free um, to catch up on the people that we helped last time and also help some new people. Uh, that's what I'd like to do again or similar in the future. Okay guys, so thank you so much for all your wonderful questions. Also, the second vlog is going to be coming pretty soon after this vlog. I also visited a snake temple here, so that's pretty cool and that's going to be in the next vlog. Meanwhile, if you like this vlog, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Um, send me a message with any other questions you may have and I'll always try and answer them. I've got my Instagram link below. Uh, the link to my film and book project is below. Um, subscribe to this channel if you want to watch more vlogs. And in the meantime, have a great weekend. But I'm going to see you in the second vlog very soon. So guys, thank you. I'm here in the Snake Temple here in uh, Penang. It's really funny because there's these signs everywhere saying like, do not touch the venomous vipers and don't touch the snakes. And I'm walking around very quietly also kind of looking around in case the snake's gonna drop on my head, in case the snake's gonna drop on my head, in case the snake's gonna drop on my head, in case the snake's gonna drop on my head.